Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In the studio today, I have again the Raspberry Pi 400. I've done a few videos on this unit right here. It's one of my favorite things in the world. How cool is this? A keyboard built into a Raspberry Pi. So I wanted to take a few minutes to check out the latest version of Manjaro ARM, and that's what's installed on this Pi 400 right now. I set up a little station for myself to test it out and had a lot of fun with it. In fact, I liked it so much that I've decided to create this video to share my thoughts with you guys on Manjaro running on the Raspberry Pi 400. Let's get right into it. All right, so here it is, the ARM edition of Manjaro. And this is actually the Mate edition. I originally started testing out the XFCE edition, but I had some trouble setting up my displays, so I decided to try the Mate edition to see if I still had the same issue. The problem with the XFCE edition is that dual displays didn't really work out so well. I wasn't actually able to get that working, I don't know why. But here on the Mate edition, I was able to get that working. And when I refer to dual displays, I'm talking about my capture card, which is essentially like a display. I mirror it with the display that is in front of me as I do the review. It works fine in Mate, but I wasn't able to get a full 4K resolution in either version. So overall, there are some quirks when it comes to displays in Manjaro. And one of the issues I ran into was with my 4K display, I was barely able to read the text at all during the initial setup and the desktop was hard to see as well. So I would like to see some adjustments made when it comes to detecting a 4K resolution and adjusting the fonts accordingly. But after I got through the quirks when it comes to display management, from that point forward, everything has been solid. And as you can see, here it is. Now off camera, I went ahead and connected to Wi-Fi. After I did that, I installed all available updates, and as of the time I'm recording this video, I'm completely up to date. Now Mate has always been one of my favorite desktop environments. It's actually my desktop environment of choice when I want something simpler or lighter weight. It's a great mix of lightweight with functionality, and I think it's awesome. So not a lot has changed, in my opinion, from the last time I have looked at Manjaro, when I look at the colors and the themes and such, they have customized the icon theme as you can see here. It's a dark mode theme by default with green highlights and green icons. I think it looks pleasant. And I have to say the default theme when it comes to Mate is really kind of bland. So I'm very happy that they have decided to customize it in their Mate edition because it looks great. So here we have the Kaja file manager, if I'm saying that right. Here it is. And it's a very functional file manager, one of my favorites. I love it, it gets the job done. And we also have Firefox here by default. And I think the responsiveness is actually fine. Sure, it could be a little faster, and it probably would be faster if I was running off of an SSD or something like that. But I think for desktop use, it's totally fine. In the Mate Edition, we have quite a few customization options available to us. So the Control Center, you can get a taste of all the different things that you can configure here. So for example, we have Mate Tweak. And this gives us some additional control over our desktop. So for example, if we want a computer icon, a trash icon, home icon, you get the idea. We can customize which icons we want on our desktop if we want any at all. I usually like to have the home directory and I also like to see the mounted volumes on the desktop as well. So if I plug in a flash drive or something like that, I like to see an icon for it. So that's usually what I do. And then here under panel, we actually have some default themes that we can choose between.
And that actually changes things just a little bit. But it's interesting to play around with this and customize the look and feel of Mate, which you can definitely do. And every now and then with Mate, you do see errors like this. This is not Manjaro's fault. Mate has some legitimate bugs, especially when you switch layouts. So the Mate menu has an issue here. So what I'm going to do is just go back to the GNOME 2 version. But you can play around with this and find a look and feel that works well for you. And then we have some additional features here that we can enable if we'd like. And when it comes to the dock and the HUD, for example, those are grayed out. You can't select those because the underlying packages are not installed by default. I would like to see those packages installed so that these options would work. But if you were to install the package that any of these options require, then it would start working. In fact, I'll go ahead and try that right now. Let's see if I can get this working on the first shot. And I think the package name is Plank. Let's see. And there it is. And I know I don't need to use the command line for installing packages, but it's just muscle memory at this point. So now that I've installed the Plank package, and then I closed Mate Tweak and reopened it, I am now able to actually check this box right here to enable the dock, and here it is. Now obviously it's displaying over the panel that was already here. You can actually delete the panel that is already there at the bottom by clicking on delete this panel right here, but I'm not going to worry about that. But you get the idea. You are able to select additional features by checking the appropriate box. But one criticism I have of the distribution already is that the packages for these options should be installed by default, so that way people don't have to Google what package it is that's required to make one of these options available. I just so happened to remember the name of the package for the Plank panel, so I was able to install that. But if you didn't already know the name of the package, it may not be so easy. And then we have some additional options right here, as you can see. In addition to that, under administration, we have add remove software. So earlier I used the command line to install the Plank package, but I didn't need to do that. I could have actually just installed the package right from here. So if I wanted to search for another package, for example, I really like Terminator. It's one of my favorite terminal emulators. And let's see if it's available. And sure enough, here it is. So I will click Install, and then Apply. Type in my super secret password. Of course, it's going to need some additional packages for dependencies, no problem. And now it's installed, I can go ahead and launch it from this button right here. And here it is, here's Terminator. And what I like about this is that you can have splits in different directions. So you can split horizontally, for example, vertically as well. You can have entire new tabs and you can have additional splits inside there. And you're even able to set it up so that you can mirror what you type in one section to automatically be typed in the other. And I've seen people use Terminator to manage multiple servers at the same time, which is pretty cool. But anyway, that was an example of installing an application in the ARM edition of Manjaro, which is every bit as easy as it is in the standard Manjaro version. So no complaints there at all. Terminator and Plank are the only two applications that I've installed. The rest that you see here is basically what comes with Manjaro. So for example, we have the Pluma text editor, which is actually very decent. We have an archive manager, and we have the usual suite of LibreOffice tools. LibreOffice Math is right here. 
draw right there. I've already gone over Firefox. That's the default web browser. And then we have the remainder of the LibreOffice suite right here. LibreOffice is actually what I used for writing my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 3rd Edition. So be sure to check that out if you are looking for a book about Ubuntu Server. That just goes to show you how awesome LibreOffice is because I was able to use it to professionally publish a book. So that's saying quite a bit. And as for the version, at the time I'm recording this video, we have version 7.1.1.2 of LibreOffice. And considering this is a rolling release, you might even have a newer version if you are using this on your Raspberry Pi. And we have all kinds of software here, but I will leave it up to you to check out everything that it comes with. Basically, just about everything you would need to be productive out of the box is included by default, which is awesome. When it comes to performance, this will give you an idea of what the ARM edition of Manjaro looks like when you are mostly idle. I have nothing running right now but the system monitor itself, no browsers or anything. And we can see the CPU usage for the desktop environment and the distribution, as well as the memory usage. And the memory usage is just shy of 600 MB bytes, as you can see right here. And the Pi 400 has four gigs of RAM, so we're a little constrained here, but it is what it is. I would highly prefer an eight gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 400. I'm not really sure if there's ever going to be an eight gig version of this unit, but I guess I can hope. And overall, I think the performance is very good for a Raspberry Pi. Now, of course, there are ways of getting more performance out of a Raspberry Pi, but as you can see, just opening applications, it's reasonably fast. Sure, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but it's reasonable and definitely very usable. In fact, I think I like this distribution the most for the Raspberry Pi. Don't get me wrong, Raspberry Pi OS is pretty cool, but there's something about having Manjaro on the Raspberry Pi that just feels even more awesome. It's a rolling release. The Raspberry Pi OS is not really a rolling release, and Manjaro is. You just keep updating whenever there's updates available, and you'll always be on the latest version. Overall, I'm really impressed with Manjaro ARM. I think it's awesome. Now, there were some quirks when it comes to display management, high DPI, and things like that, but once I got past those things, what I was left with was a very great desktop experience, and Manjaro ARM has become my favorite distribution to run on the Raspberry Pi. And I also like the fact that during the initial boot, it asks you for all the settings that you would probably want to configure at the beginning, like your locale, your time zone, and things like that. Things that you would normally have to go into Raspi config for with Raspberry Pi OS, they just flat out ask you at the very beginning, which I think is really cool. There's a lot of great things to say about this, but I think the video speaks for itself. It's a solid desktop for the Raspberry Pi, and I'm also curious to hear what you guys think about it. So be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.